decided to do a do-over of all the videos that I had taken that I was going to upload yesterday, tried to upload, finished uploading um, this morning, and it just didn't really work. The videos just too long. One of them didn't have any sound. I, the one that I took on my cell phone, so I'm not sure what happened. At any rate, I'm going to try and keep it under 13 minutes. The other one would have been like 20 minutes or whatever. Um, so that I can use my One True Media account because that innocent thing just wasn't cutting it. So, um, I have lots of updates I'm going to go over. So, last week was actually a pretty challenging week, but yet still, uh, I think, a good week. So, um, Wednesday, last week, September 19th, was the second year anniversary of the uh, passing of my uncle. Um, my uncle was killed in a single vehicle car accident. Um, at least to my knowledge with no explanation. And, I mean it was literally as if God just came and snatched him, um, his soul out of his body in the middle of the mountains in northern Arizona. And it was such a powerful um, moment, I think, for myself. Um, my family, you know, still very much, um, a few of them are still very much in the grieving place. And, you know, and I still miss my uncle um, very much, but um, I guess it taught me that you shouldn't take life for granted. And, and that's one of the, the key things that I really have been um, trying to work on since then. I, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of all transpired right at that moment, um, a few months prior to his death. Actually, I'm sorry, one month prior to his death, um, I just had this calling that I needed to, you know, get right spiritually, and I had started going to the church that um, I belong to now, um, really started focusing, um, I'd say, at that point, um, on really feeling the need to repair the relationship with my dad. Um, then also the next step was, or the next layer was really getting my health um, under control and, and my weight and what have you. And then, you know, the next phase will be, you know, moving into, you know, having my own family, getting married and having kids um, before I feel like I turn into an old maid. But at any rate, um, so last week was kind of um, shadowed, I guess, maybe by that remembrance of my uncle. Um, I also will have this experience again next week because while my uncle's funeral was being planned, my grandfather went into hospice and passed um, shortly thereafter. So it's, it's a crazy two weeks um, that I went through, but I have allowed to transform me in a positive way rather than getting stuck in the um, sadness that, you know, losing someone does. And I, I look at death completely different um, now because of it. And, you know, I just, I wish peace for my family and anyone who's suffering from the loss of a loved one, um, whether it's a human being or an animal, you know, depending on um, your closeness to that creature, person, whatever, you know, it's all valid feelings because they touch our lives uh, in ways that we could never imagine until after they're gone. So, um, you know, value your loved ones, appreciate them, don't text, don't Facebook, pick up a phone, go have dinner, go to a movie, enjoy them in the living presence, and, you know, give them flowers today because they're not going to see it, you know, when you're crying over a casket. So the next thing um, I'll talk about is I recognized that I was really struggling or still am struggling and will continue to struggle with um, my urge to overeat. Um, I, it frustrates me so much, you know, I really, really don't understand why I continue to feel like, oh, just another pinch of this or just a, a few more .2 ounces of chicken or whatever the case may be, um, but I know that in the last couple of weeks that's definitely been something that I've been struggling with. 
um, is not being conscious of my portion control. So I did try to work on it and actually had some success with the scale. So I recognized that that portion control is definitely a factor in the success of my weight loss um, or weight stalls. Thankfully, no weight gain. But um, so yeah, I just say that to say I. I will always struggle with that and I want to speak it out loud so that way I hold myself accountable. Um, the next thing is uh, I really these last couple weeks have tried to stay away from the scale because I was really feeling like the scale had control maybe um, or it was just like luring me to uh, check in constantly. Um, which is not the place that I want to be in because I don't want my experience to be about the scale. Like, I value the scale as a tool, but what I don't like is when um, myself and others become obsessed with the scale um, as, you know, as if the scale has control over whether or not you lose weight. And I know that's not the science behind losing weight has nothing to do with the scale. It's about, again, it's about what you're putting in your body and what you're doing with your body. Um, and then, you know, also if there's anything going on. If you're a woman, if you're menstruating, you know, that affects your weight loss, weight gain, weight stall. Um, you know, if you're sick or have other things going on, that all, there's lots of little factors that, that, that play into it. All that being said, um, I did have a moment um, of wanting to check, and so when I was at my mom's house, my brother had created this like workout space or whatever, and I knew he had a scale in there. I'm not really a fan of his. It's just a regular bathroom scale, which doesn't compare, of course, to the higher powered scales like your doctor's office or gyms have. But I just because I haven't been on a scale for some time and I really was wanting to know where things are going because the last couple of weeks have been pretty crappy. So I stepped on the scale and it said 261. So I was ecstatic um, because my last weigh-in was 270-something, 270, 272, somewhere around there. And that meant that in the last two and a half or so weeks I'd lost um, 11, 12 pounds. So I was just over the moon, and surprisingly enough, I had a doctor's appointment coming up next week, so I knew I would confirm it and see where things were. So I don't know. I'm just saying that almost as a confession that I, I did, um, you know, check in just to see out of curiosity, because it was kind of driving me crazy that it had been some time since I last checked in, and, and when I last checked in, that was the basically the notice that I was comfortably in the middle of a stall or plateau or whatever. So um, last week really struggled with, you know, trying to get a, a move on with things. Um, just wasn't feeling well. Just kind of felt off. Um, still got up, walked the dog, um, but really just couldn't get things going. Um, so I went to, oh no, okay, so my cousin, my mom's cousin, so my second cousin, um, came to town a week or two ago and was in conversation with my mom and her sisters, just about catching up about life and just sharing things, and he let them know that he operates a, a boot camp and um, helps people with personal training and um, things of that nature. He's a former Morrill drill sergeant. Um, he used to train officers at Quantico and just, you know, really physically active and just passionate about it. He's getting ready to retire from the police department and really wants to make this next phase of his life about helping people to, to get in shape, lose weight, eat better, etc. So I had a good conversation with him Saturday. He gave me lots of tips and things. I'll share um, some of those things in another video. Um, and he was just telling me some things that I should go grab to kind of get organized with starting this new phase uh, with. So I fast forward to um, Sunday. I had planned to go to House of Fitness. I would encourage you guys to check out 
House of Fitness on the internet. I think it's houseoffitness.net. Either way, you can Google House of Fitness. Um, if you see Arizona come up, then you found the right link. I'm not sure if they have stores elsewhere in the country, but I know we have two stores here in the Phoenix metro area. So contact House of Fitness, um, ask them questions, see if they knew this product. My cousin was telling me to check out this protein powder by Lee Labrada. Labrada is L-A-B-R-A-D-A, -A -A. Lee Labrada. He's a bodybuilder that has his own product line. So call House of Fitness, talk to him. He's just like, yeah, we have it. Um, he's just like, I don't know if you, you know, specifically need to have this product or you want it, but there's, you know, there's some two other protein powders out there that are really good. And so he was recommending I I S O. So I S O 100. Um, it's another protein powder. About this, you know, those small size containers um, at House of Fitness, 30. Two dollars, like thirty-one ninety-nine. So I think a really good price for, you know, the quality of the product. Um, really clean protein powder. Um, he was saying not a lot of added extra ingredients and things, especially if you're taking multivitamins and supplements. You don't need all the kind of other stuff that they put in as fillers in some of the other protein um, powders. He was telling me. So. Go to Sunday. Um, I go to church. I had to help with several of the uh, communion services, um, help with several of the services doing communion. And um, my day gets thrown off um, like that when I'm at church. So I hadn't really eaten, um, left church almost um, close to 2 o'clock, went to my mom's. I promised her I was going to make salsa and um, I was going to make some red Thai chicken curry and then I was going to run, get gas, and then go to House of Fitness. So I did all that, get to House of Fitness, talking with the uh, store manager who was fantastic. He's a bodybuilder. Um, the store really kind of caters to the bodybuilder world, but it's for anybody. Um, they just have a lot of specific products that will help bodybuilders during their training process. So mid-conversation, I'm talking, and all of a sudden I start to feel really nauseous and um, my head started to feel really lightheaded and dizzy and then all of a sudden I just I couldn't hear him talking anymore it was like I was going into a tunnel and the next thing you know I passed out so eight firemen later ambulance drive to the ER and I am left diagnosed with basal vagal syncope um, at least that's what the ER doctor said I've since gone to see um, my doctor uh, yesterday, and she's not convinced that um, that it was a basal vagal. Um, I'm not sure why she's not willing to um, believe that, but she just feels like the ER doctor um, doesn't know my history, and that's the easiest diagnosis, I guess. I don't know. So it's kind of like a wait and see for it to happen again. If it does, I need to come come back. Um, the other thing that we talked about was my blood pressure and my blood work. Um, my blood pressure, as you guys know, was, has been one of my goals to get under control so that I can get off the medicine. My thought was that um, the medicine may have contributed to this because um, basal vagal is basically a drastic sudden drop in your blood pressure. and your body isn't able to pump the blood to your brain and so your body just kind of powers off and then you collapse and then the blood starts flowing again and then you kind of come back uh, too. So my concern was that I've been taking blood pressure medication and a diuretic at the strength of when I was at 344 pounds. That is not the case any longer. Um, and when they were measuring my blood pressure, it was actually significantly low um, at the hospital. I mean, they did it probably 10, 10, 10 times maybe, at give or take maybe, and um, every single time it was well under what the normal blood pressure rate should be. So her thing was cease with the, the blood pressure medication, but I need to monitor it. And if at any point my blood pressure goes over 140 over 90, then I need to take at least a half a pill to kind of help get it under control. But so as far as it goes, that's being monitored. 
but I'm in the reduction phase, I guess, of the blood pressure. She was not willing to say that that had anything to do with the vasovagal or with the fainting episode. Um, and then the other thing was um, my blood work. I thought it came back perfect, but apparently um, my white blood count has been on this downward trend and they can't figure it out. Um, so she's concerned or she's paying attention, but everybody wanted to point fingers at everybody. Um, she, so I was kind of like in the middle of a, a little war between my doctor's offices yesterday trying to figure out if anybody could think of any treatment or whatever that has happened that would relate to my white blood count, uh, my white blood count going down. And everybody was just like, it's not us, it's not this, it's not that, you've been doing this, we've been checking it. Um, so it's kind of like this unknown thing right now and everybody's like frustrated and confused. So the course of action is to wait 30 days, have my blood work done again and see if there was a fluke um, infection or something. At hindsight, I'm looking back after the conversation and I realize I have a root canal that needs to be done. Um, so I don't know if that could be triggering um, that signal of an infection going to push me to go get that stupid procedure done now, I think, at least to rule it out anyway. Um, so that's kind of where things are. I'm not sure about this basal vagal. It's, it's a very uh, uncomfortable experience, and the fear of the unknown, I think, drives a lot of what my next steps might be because, it, it, you know, I was under no stress when it happened. I didn't have any of the scenarios that they say can trigger it. I was in the middle of a conversation. I was excited. I had no stress on my shoulders. Um, so I don't, I don't know why it happened, but I don't want it to happen, especially because um, I like to work out. I, you know, really don't have, you know, that immediate support system to be constantly checking on me. So um, I value being healthy so that I, you know, nothing bad happens. So I have to figure that out, and then as far as the blood work, I could go see a hematologist, but I really don't know. So it's kind of perplexing. I, it took me from a really good high because she said my um, all my labs and things are excellent, um, and that's what I wanted to hear. In turn, and, and when I say labs, I mean like my glucose level, cholesterol levels, you know, all the usually the the big buzzwords that they you know are dropping when they're trying to tell somebody to lose weight, like my all those areas are phenomenal, but the white blood count is, you know, really the the dark shadow right now. So, so that's kind of where things are. Um, I think that everything for now. I certainly will do another video, but just want to let you guys know. You know, that's where um, I was. Sorry, I didn't make a video last week, but things were clearly off if I ended up in the ER, um, and I kind of felt off and that just proves that something, you know, was going on. I will check in with you guys later. Thanks so much for the support, especially on my fitness pal. Oh, that's what I'm realizing I haven't shared is, let me get to the numbers real quick. Um, so started out my journey in um, January, March of this year. Um, heaviest weight was 344 pounds. And surprisingly, I am very surprised, um, my weight uh, on yesterday, on Tuesday, was 258 pounds. So I think that's like a loss of 86 pounds or something. So i um, really proud of myself. Extremely um, encouraged again. Um, I guess I just needed to have that kind of wall to realize, you know, this is always going to be a learning process and um, it is not going to be easy as doing the same routine over and over and over again, eating the same things over and over and over again. Um, and when you change it up, you will see results. And so in that two and a half week period of realizing that I officially had hit this wall or stall, I was able to shed 12 pounds. And really that was changing my eating because I didn't work out nearly as hard as I had been. So not to say that that's going to be the case this time moving forward, all the time moving forward maybe, but at least it did in this case work and I'm really excited over that number. Um, so, okay, so that's it.